everybody, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. Today, I get a treat for you. I've got an update video for my crosscut sled. Last year when I made this sled, it was just the beginning of my addiction to the MicroJig MatchFit system. Well, as you can see, I've been busy. So I thought I'd share with you some of the things that I've done and answer some of the questions that have come up on the video from the original sled. But if you want to see what all I've done, you're just going to have to keep watching. So don't forget, like, subscribe, notify all that good stuff before you leave. All right, keep watching. That's right, CNC. I decided since in the past I've always just cut those on a table saw and used my router or router table to cut all the grooves. I thought, well, I've got a mess of other things I'm working on the CNC, so I just made up a path and created a couple of these jigs on there. And I thought, well, I'll test out the uh, dovetail bit on the CNC just to see how well it does. Well, turns out it does really well. I pre-cut the line with a quarter inch end mill and then followed that up with the half inch shank dovetail bit. And I found that playing with different speeds and feeds that 55 inches a minute worked really well for this application. And as you can see, I made a pre-cut hole on each end of the line, plunged in with the bit and plunged out on the other end or came out on the other end anyway. So I already had a few of these jigs made up, but I wanted to go ahead and try doing a few of the new ones that I wanted to create. So did it on the CNC. And as you can see, worked really well. Some of my parts were half inch, some of them three quarters, but pre-cutting those uh, dovetail lines with the bit worked fantastic. And so I just thought I'd throw in the CNC side just so you could see what was going on. And it does a really nice job and it makes fast work of cutting out a lot of different parts. And uh, I made a lot of clamps and things for my CNC anyway. And so I just used some of the scrap material and integrated in some of the uh, dimensions on some of the parts I needed to cut out, some of the angles I needed to do. So did all that up and you can see that's very well worth my time knocking that out. Now let's get to assembly. Being that I cut most of these out on the CNC, that made quick work of assembly. Everything was square, fairly clean, and I did pre-sand most of the parts before I did the assembly, just to make sure everything was nice and clean and didn't have any burrs. And here I'm uh, putting putting together the spline jig uh, slash tenoning jig, and uh, you can see the sides there. I've got a little; they're fairly tall, um, but there's a groove in the back that's going to allow for that to be able to be mounted onto the sled, should I need to and then also used independently and I'm just coming behind there making sure everything's flat no issues there checking for square and if you don't have one that little incorrect guaranteed square pff, the way to go now moving on to the fence and as you can see I made a little radius on one end and that is so that uh, that's the end that's going to be up next to the fence and that allows me to get a much better curve or angle um, just about as tight as I need to and I don't have to worry about that sharp point catching my back fence. And I made these little ang angle blocks to go in the back to keep everything square that way you know I didn't have any issues with the fence getting out and of course I'm using the micro jig clamps to clamp those down at that funky angle. And as the old saying goes you can never have enough clamps well that's true. but let that glue dry a little bit and go off to another project. What I decided to do was since this could also be used on my table saw as an independent tenoning jig, I decided to put UHMW, that's ultra high molecular weight, uh, these little strips. I bought it at my local uh, woodworking supply store and uh, they offer this in a roll. These are fantastic for the bottom of jigs and different fixtures because they add, they add little hardly any friction at all and they make things slide super smooth. So three strips across there and I chose that angle because normally if it's going to be used independently that will be sliding with the, the saw. Just cutting out that little notch making everything nice and clean so that the bolts and hardware that uh, will be used to mount that to will have a place to go. But that stuff cuts super smooth with a box cutter as you can see and uh, you'll if you ever had a chance to use it trust me it makes a world of difference. If you've got wooden drawers 
uh, that really makes a difference on the on those wooden drawers. So where it's wood on wood and uh, makes minimal friction, make everything slide very smooth. So now I'm throwing on a coat of uh, John, uh, Mohawk Blue Label Paste Wax. Um, a lot of people like Johnson's. Um, I don't have it in my local supply, so I use the Mohawk, and I found I actually like that better. And um, it tends to go on a little better and give you a little smoother action. Uh, again, minimal friction is what we're after, but it also seals the wood and does a nice job there. So I coated all the parts uh, with that wax uh, just to give it a nice sealed finish and make it smooth. And I made an auxiliary piece for my uh, fence. Now, you don't have to do this if you decide you're going to make one, but I encourage you to do so. Because what this allows you to do is actually have a backer that's completely adjustable. You can cut it off, trim it off as you need to. And then uh, literally it makes a, a nice backer for angled pieces like this. So that instead of ruining your actual fence, uh, you can run the blade into that auxiliary and it works well. And I line those holes so that the uh, micro jig hardware fit perfectly in there. So initial cut. flip that over and get the other end and that anchor guaranteed square proves it the jig work flawless so I wanted to cover quickly if you're going to make different angles and different miters, well, you know, obviously I have the basic angles covered. I have my 22 and a half and a 45. Now these particular jigs have slots in them, so I can use them anywhere along the table that I want or in conjunction with any of the other jigs, whether that be the tapering jig, the tending jig, the spline jig, whatever. These work really well in conjunction with those. But these I have made specifically, I've got them made larger. So I have a 60 degree here, a 30 degree here, and a 90 degree here. I've also got the 90 degree here and then a 45 here. And likewise, I have a 22 and a half degree and a 90 degree there. So I can use these in any configuration I like to achieve a lot of angles. For instance, if I wanted to create a 45, I was doing a square picture frame and all I wanted to do was make four corners. Now, the main thing is how I set up the fence. Typically, this slot I use this slot to configure this end. I use the front to back slots to configure the swing end, okay? Now, if I find that for some reason this slot's not long enough, I can obviously come in one of the others and hit the center one. But generally, I haven't found too many occasions where that's a problem. And you can see, this gives me a lot of freedom. Now, so if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna mount this jig straight up against the fence, and I'm gonna slide it straight in using the pivot point and then I'm going to come over here and lock that in. Now, if I'm concerned that this jig's going to move on me, well, obviously, this is built around the micro jig clamps. So I'm going to slide that in, pull that tight, give that a couple turns. Now, this isn't going anywhere, so now I can be confident to know that I'm actually bringing this fence in snug and tight here. Let's give it a quick lockdown of the knobs. Got it pretty loose and lock that in down. And there we go. I can leave this here if I want to or move it away, whichever you like. But I've got different um, slots here for the different clamping fixtures. If I need to clamp things from the face, I can also clamp them from behind. But essentially, that's the quick way to do it. And it works really easily if I need to change that from a 45 to a 22 and a half can put that in there, loosen these two little knobs. Okay, now I've just created a 22 and a half. Let's slide this more this way so that it's not so close to my fence. And we'll let that ride. So right there looks good. So I'll clamp that down, clamp that down. Now, there it is. I'm good to go, 22 and a half degrees. So that's it in a nutshell. Using the different angles, 
preset angles to create custom angles, custom miters, whatever you might need to do. But that's how I set this up most of the time. Yet one more use for the micro jig hardware. I've got this, uh, what was my old stop that I usually kept just mounted back here for emergencies. I brought that over, screwed that in, ran that little camera mount up there, and was able to get some above ground shots of that. How cool is that? So now add that to the list of things that the hardware can do. It can be a camera mount. Yep. All I did here was slightly angle that shim jig. You make your initial cut, flip it over. Make your second cut and rinse and repeat until you get all the shims you want cut. Fantastic. And you can see you can adjust that to different angles should you choose to and literally get away and do about anything you want with those shim jigs and tapering jig. Demonstrating how to uh, make the tenoning jig or the spline. I'm not using a spline here. Right here I'm making a saddle joint. You can see the tenon piece over there now. Just made my initial cut for the saddle. And boom. It does take a little bit of setup to get your side to side adjustment just right. These were actually my test pieces for something else I was going to work on later. And as you can see, literally it took me two tries to get that perfect fit. A little bit of adjustment on the blade, not be in business. But as you can see, perfectly square. You can't see a line there, that's for sure. And the tapering jig. This doubles as a tapering jig, a tall fence, and also a, uh, a means of getting a straight edge cut on a piece of curvy edged wood. I made mine, I believe it was 8 inches wide, and I believe I chose uh, 36 long. I really didn't need one that long. I might have been 30 inches long. I didn't need it that long, but I made it that long because you just never know. Too much is always better than not enough. Well, yeah, anyway. So how you make this work, you adjust your fence to where it just barely will cut the material. And after you made your initial pass to get that edge straight, you can take it off the jig. Get a measurement on your board and adjust your fence to the width that you need your board to be. In this case, I was trying to maximize that because I was going to glue these two pieces together. So now that you've got your board ripped to the width you need, of course, you bring out the sled, set the height of your blade, square up one end, and adjust down your stop. That cat's Moses stop is the cat's meow. Get that adjusted in pretty good. This was before I added the tape measure. So I've already squared one end, butt that in, make my initial cut, quickly make my second cut, and there are my two pieces ready to go. If you've got plywood material, form the same way. Square one end. Slide that over, make your cut, and just like that, you're done. Man, I love this sled. Thanks for watching part one of the sled jig video. The original was about 30 minutes, so I knew I needed to cut it in half. I mean, you were going to be asleep through it anyway, so why not just cut it in half and give you two reasons to sleep? Well, look for part two next week, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day, everybody.